Today is gameplay rework day. That means I will take you with me and talk you through everything I do with my game, everything I change on my prototype, so hopefully you can learn something from that. Let's get started. Let's make this prototype absolutely amazing. I gave the game to a couple of my game design friends and they absolutely did not like the fact that it takes longer and longer now for these eggs to hatch. You see, at the beginning they hatch extremely quickly and then the longer you play, the longer it takes them to hatch out of their eggs. I did that to counteract exponential growth and also to make it more difficult and more exciting as the level goes on. But as it turns out, it did not make the level more climatic. It made it more anticlimactic. The game slows down further and further the further you go, which is absolutely not what I intended. There are really long waiting times. You have to wait really long until you can do something again. We do not want that in our game. There should always be something to do. And also we find, need to find a different way to uh, raise the tension. Maybe increasing the speed of the enemies wasn't that bad of an idea after all. That's how it was in the very first prototype. I changed that later. So maybe we'll just change that back. So let's see. Here is what I changed so far. Firstly, you start with more creatures. So the beginning is even a little bit quicker. Secondly, the eggs slowly grow. So you can roughly estimate how long it will take them to hatch. Also, they always take exactly the same amount of time to hatch, which in some way feels better, but it causes a lot of problems. As you can see, the number of creatures gets out of hand really quickly. This exponential growth can just get really, really, really crazy, which is not good for the performance. And it will also be really hard to balance, to do the balancing with this kind of exponential growth, because losing a couple of creatures early on could really snowball out of control. We definitely need a way to limit the population of creatures, otherwise both balancing and performance will just be incredibly huge issues. So yeah, how do we limit this exponential growth? My idea was this one, let's change that here. Eggs that overlap each other don't grow. So now you can see here are a couple of eggs that overlap with different ones and only the eggs that are on top are actually growing and hatching new creatures. So that forces you to spread them out a lot more, which is cool. It feels like there's a lot more to do, but sometimes it feels really hard to guess whether they're going to overlap or not. And it feels frustrating when they're too close to each other, even though it looked like they were far enough apart. I really like this solution, but the way it is now, it's still far from perfect. It feels really frustrating when you accidentally get something like this with a lot of eggs on top of each other. What I'm thinking is maybe they will just hatch slower when they're close to each other. So let's try to prototype that. Okay, here we go. Okay, this needs to go. Bugs are just part of the process. This is very normal. Okay, as you can see, um, the ones that are a little transparent grow more slowly. And if they're far enough apart from each other, they should grow a little more quickly. They are really close to each other, so they should be really transparent. Hmm. I think we need some better feedback to how close they are to each other. Let me show you how this looks now. So green means they have enough space to grow. They hatch relatively quickly. Now when I hatch them too close to each other, you can see they turn a little more orange and they hatch a lot more slowly. That's a nice strategical element because it forces you to spread your creatures and eggs out even more. Plus it limits the exponential growth because once you have eggs all over the screen, all eggs will start hatching more slowly as they are pretty close to each other. But I mean, it's still viable to do this. You can still hatch them really close to each other. It's another interesting decision you can take, whether you want to do that or not, you can still have some advantages, especially if you have no space. Uh, one thing I don't like about the beginning is that it takes so long until you can turn them into eggs, because when you do it right at the beginning, 
it's really suboptimal, they are way too close to each other. This is just unnecessary waiting time right at the beginning of the match. We don't want that. Let's just start them a little further out. This is the start formation I decided on because now you can you have four creatures you can turn into X right at the beginning and then four more a little bit later. This way there's the minimum amount of downtime. There's always something to do. There's a bit of a downtime but I think at the beginning of the level that's okay. It gets more and more stressful the further we go anyway. So let's see if I can beat this level. It's really cool. Now you have really have to pay attention that you uh, spread them out properly. One thing I want to check now is uh, how crazy I can explode my population. So I'm gonna try building the creature farm on the right hand side and distracting the monster on the left side. So far so good. Uh, now I think I need to be careful not to place them too close to each other because that makes them turn red and they will hatch really, really slowly. Okay, so you can still grow a pretty big farm, but it definitely doesn't go into the thousands, which is good. This looks pretty, pretty promising. Obviously, if you spread the farm out on a larger area, you can grow even more creatures. Come here. Come here, little creature. I will kill you. <laughs> it's just an endless circle of testing and changing and testing and changing. Whenever something feels off, you just change it. Problem is sometimes you don't realize yourself when something is off. That's why you need a lot of play testers. Now I created this cute little graphic. Let's add this into Game Maker. Drag this in. Yes, we can. Now when we start the game, we have a beautiful arrow. Now if we start the game, we have a beautiful <coughs> ugly <coughs> start screen. One of the next thing things I definitely need to fix is there need to be some more interesting enemies. So let me create the normal enemy dude. This is going to be the very first level. Just a handful of these normal enemies. Let's see how difficult this is. Okay, pretty easy. Uh, oh my god, let's delete all of this crap right here with boring repetitive enemies. We're gonna build that from ground up. So now I created this cool little normie spawner. I just need to make a new level. Now we should have a normie spawner pretty much in the center of the room. Let's see. Okay. That's definitely interesting, but they are so extremely slow that I'm not really worried at all. We need to make them faster and we need to make the spawner more slowly. So one thing I did with the spawner is that it spawns enemies faster and faster. And this way hopefully I get the climax that I wanted. It sounded wrong. <laughs> yeah, tension is rising. I have more and more creatures, but there are also more and more enemies exiting this vortex. Luckily, they are still extremely, extremely slow. Now the vortex is gone, the spawner and all of the enemies are out. Okay, so I think this is super easy, but obviously I don't know what new players think. Let's make another level where there are two of these spawners. And hopefully this will be a challenge for me, but I think it won't. Oh no. 
I'm running out of creatures. This is awesome. Let me reorder this normie level because I think in this configuration it's too frustrating or too close. So here's what I'm thinking. Firstly, we need even easier enemies because I think new players would have a little bit too much trouble with these right here. They're a little too fast. They can take a little bit too much damage, even though they're super easy to defeat for me. I think new players would have quite a bit of problems. Another thing is that exploding these creatures creates way too much clutter on the screen. It doesn't really look all that nice and clean when there's a lot going on on the screen and then those little projectiles are flying around all over the place. So I think I will remove the bounce and replace it with something different. The purpose of the bounce is to make the projectiles hit uh, more enemies. So it doesn't matter that much where you detun detonate your little creatures. We'll find a different way to achieve the same thing without creating that much clutter, I think. Mm -hmm. So I can see those little triangles. They hit enemies as well. Okay. There we go. Mm, maybe I can give them a slightly different color. Now they should be yellow. Bing. Okay. Still pretty cluttery, but makes the game a little easier, which is good. Mm, I think we would probably have way less clutter if the bullets moved faster, so. <laughs> <laughs> Feels a bit weird because the bullets are too round. I think I need to make them a little more like X. Yeah, that looks way, way, way better. Nice. I think the Heat-seeking missile projectiles can deal a little more damage, just a tiny bit more damage. Uh, sh no, that's way too much damage. <laughs> oh my god, maybe it should even be less. Bang. Nice! I really, really like how this turned out. But the seeking missiles also need to be faster, way, way faster. Let's make them three times as fast. Nice. Maybe we should make these projectiles yellow as well. Maybe this makes it look a little cleaner. Bang. Well, yes, I think it makes it look cleaner. Bang. Yes. Let's try the hardcore level <laughs> with the new settings. Obviously, this level should not be given to beginners. Uh, now I have to decide if I want to make even easier enemies. Uh, let me let me pretend like I'm really stupid and let's play the first level. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what is happening? Why are these things moving? Okay. Uh, what happened? now okay okay uh, this is I can already feel this is not suitable for a first level I I don't feel it like let's make another enemy let's say they have only one quarter of the HP and half the movement speed so this is the first level now this should be really super duper easy. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I've already won. You know what? The arrows 
deal too much damage. Let's actually cut that in half. Let me show you. In this very first level when you ex let them explode right here, see what the difference between the first and the second impact wave is? It's huge. Actually, I think it's pretty good like this. Now this is level two. There are two faster ones in the mix. Uh, probably not a good idea. They're too difficult. Now finally I created a little bit of a boss. This is obviously the same as in the last version, but now it should start out a little more slowly and then speed up over time. Come to Papa Mr. Bosso. My dad tried it earlier and it was way too hard for him. Now I reduced the spawn rate and less enemies spawn out of this spawner in total. Let's make some stupid moves just like a beginner would. Bang. How about... Doesn't increase its speed so much. huh? How about that? What do you think about that? Wouldn't that be nice? Let's see. Dip, 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 dip. Oops, I accidentally made them explode. Oh, what a pity. Well, I hope this is okay. Okay, fantastic. So now we have a pretty good foundation to continue with the art style, so stay tuned for that. And see you tomorrow!